Hey there my awesome peeps, it's your gal Rebel here with another Fortnite creative tutorial and today I'm going to show you how you can make a voting system. Um, voting systems can be used for a lot but for this tutorial it's going to be for weapon loadouts. Just like that. Okay so for this voting system tutorial we're going to need a number of devices. Let's go ahead and start over here. We are going to need a timer device. You're going to need some switches, some buttons, score managers, triggers, item granters, a RNG device, the random num number generator, formerly known as Synchroster, you're going to need the pulse trigger, and a HUD message device. Now, the HUD message is optional, but I highly, highly recommend it, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start setting up the settings for each of the devices, and then we'll do their direct event binding. All right, so the settings for our devices, starting here with the timer, um, you are going to give it whatever duration you want, so let's say 30 seconds, whatever you want, the time for them to vote in, okay? Um, you can give it a name if you're going to leave it inside the voting area, so you can have, like, vote now. We're going to have our countdown direction be countdown. The start at game start, we're going to turn that on. Can interact, we don't want them to interact with it. Um, you don't have to worry about any of this. Make sure it applies to everyone and that the success on timer end is true. And the completion of behavior stays on stop. Um, visible during game, you can have it just the timer, all of it, or hidden. We're going to just leave it on timer. Um, timer and running text, I'm going to have the same thing I did for the title, vote now. We're not going to change anything here. Show on HUD, make sure it is showing on the HUD so that so they can see, if they're not staring directly at the timer, how long they have to vote. Um, and everything else can just stay the same here, okay? So we're done with the timer, let's go ahead and put it to the side. All right, so now I've got the switch. I do, as always, as I say in every tutorial, guys, recommend you naming your devices, especially with this one. It's going to help a lot. So I'm naming this S, which stands for switch. Vote one. All right, we're going to make sure that it's enabled on game start, and that's initial status off. Now, visible during game, um, you have it on either way, but this is something I do recommend if having on if you're going to have it so they can see that they already voted. Um, we're not going to do any turn on or turn off text. The model, you can have whatever you want. I like it's the sound to be off. Allow interaction is going to be on no. Whether you have it there for them to see or not, they're not interacting with it, okay? Um, we're going to leave all this alone. Check state at game start. We're going to disable that, okay? We're going to disable that option. We do not want it doing that. And we're not going to save anything else. Here. In true bot fashion, y'all, there is a setting I forgot to tell you about. And I do not want to re-record this again. So I hope you're watching. <laughs> what you need to do in here is you need to have it um, use persistence and save state, or not save, store state per player. We're not going to do any save. Do not save. You're just going to stay uh, store state per player, okay? So that's all the settings we need to do for the switch. All right, so now I've got my button here. And I am going to change the name of this button to button vote one. This because this is the first vote. My interaction time, you can have it whatever you want, but I'm going to do it instant because it's not going to matter. They're, they want to vote quickly, especially depending on the timer you have. We're not going to change anything here. Um, we are just going to make sure with the trigger sounds off because I'm weird. Make sure it make sure it is enabled at, at game start. For your interaction tech, text, you can have it vote on whatever loadout. I'm going to have it say vote, vote one. Um, you can have it say vote whatever, whatever you're having to vote on. Visible during game. Now, for this tutorial, I am going to leave it on. Because I don't have anything set up for a little podium for it to be, or a little button for it to be. Um, but, you know, if you have that set up, it does look cleaner. Interaction radius, give it a nice interaction radius, especially if you are having it hidden within, like, a primitive shape or something. And that's all we're going to do with our button. Okay? Alright, so now for our score manager. So we're going to call this one, this particular one, SM. Hello, let me type. Why does it always do that? I swear. SM. Visible vote one, and I'll explain why that in a second. Score value is going to be zero. We're not going to be awarding any score at all. Times can trigger, you're going to leave it alone. Um, we are just going to make sure that score change when activated is on one. Minimum score is going to be zero. Now, your maximum score is going to be however many players you have um, in the map. So let's say it's like eight, we can have eight, okay. Um, or if it's going to be six. So just make sure it's going to be whatever that is, all right? 
For the sake of this tutorial, I am going to put it at four just to make things go a little bit faster, okay? Enable during uh, phase, make sure it's on always. Visible in game, for this one, we're going to just make sure that only the number is visible. We're not going to do the hologram because it does that blue light from the bottom. Send event on scoring. Uh, this is going to be whatever your the maximum score is, whatever the maximum amount of players is, which for this example, we're doing four. If you have it, six players, you want six. Eight, eight. Sixteen, sixteen. So make sure it matches whatever your max players on the map is, okay? Play audio. I don't like the audio to play because it'll make that do-do-do-do-do-do every time someone wants <laughs> some picks on it and we're not going to do display um, score, okay? So we're going to say okay on that. We are going to copy the oh, oh, copy this over so that it has the same exact settings this one has, but this one is going to be, whoops, SM tally votes one, okay? So what this is going to do is going to count all the votes and I promise I'll show you how all this is in a second, but basically this is going to tally the votes from the synchronous device that we'll be setting up later, okay? So all of this is already set up. We just had to change the name. So all of it's good to go, okay? So we're done with the score manager. All right, so for our trigger, we pretty much don't need to do much in here at all. We just want to make sure that it doesn't have any sound because that can be really annoying um, in games a lot of times for players. But everything else here, you can pretty much just leave alone. Just ensure that it's enabled in game start and that it can be triggered by sequencers, okay? That's all you gotta do. So make sure that those settings are still on, all right? So we're done with the trigger. Simple and easy, right? <laughs> all right, so for our item granter. Oh, I didn't name the trigger, guys. Rebel, bad rebel. Let me just name this real quick. Trigger vote one. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know I'm leaving that in, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Moving on, guys. We're going to name our item granters. <laughs> IG vote one. So I like to have all of my stuff named down the whole line that everything's going to be connected to, okay? So that's why everything's named vote one. Enable the game start. Yes. Receiving players. Um, we're going to make sure that's going to be on all. We want everybody to receive this. Um, we're going to grant all the items because this is going to be your loadout. Grant condition is going to be always. You can equip to the granted items, but it's going to be the whole loadout, so it's up to you. I'm going to do yes and do item one. Um, remove item one grant. No, we're not going to bother with that. You can give it extra ammo. It's kind of like this is your own personal setting if you like. Um, everything else on here, we're just going to have it the way it is and we are good to go. Okay, guys, so now for our HUD message device. I am going to name this one HUD underscore vote one. Message is going to be whatever you want it to be. You can say what loadout was granted or what whatever you're doing this for. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to do vote one wins. All right, message recipient is going to be everybody. Show and mouse starts. Make sure this stays off. Time duration for however many seconds you want. Um, all this you can pretty, pretty much have you want. Let's do large. Let's do let's do bold. <laughs> for this one. Uh, play sounds up to you. Placement, I'm going to do top center so we can see it for this tutorial. Um, all this is going to be up to you guys. Everything here, all up to you. Okay? So that's all we got to change in our HUD message device. Alright, for our random number generator, you really don't have to change the name of this. Um, I'm going to leave it alone, but it's completely up to you. Value limit is going to be one and the max number of votes that you have. For this tutorial, we're going to set up three different votes, okay? Um, we don't need a winning value. Roll time, we're going to make sure that's on instant. Uh, pick each number once. You want it to say yes. Reset it on whatever you need it to do. Game start or round start. Most of these are going to be set up for round, so we'll have a reset on round start. Um, all of this we can leave alone. It's going to make sure that it's instantly setting. Zone direction, we want to make sure it's going forward for this particular setup. Okay. Um, and then your length. You know, it really just matters how wherever you're placing it. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to try to make it as small as possible. So bear with me for a second here. Alright, so I have it small just for the sake of this tutorial. Like I said, this is this particular device is going to be inside your mechanics area. Alright, moving on. Um, all of this is up to you. Visible during game. It's in the mechanics area, so it's not going to matter. 
play audio. It's going to be off. We don't want to hear it rolling. Trust me, because it's going to be annoying with what we're doing here. And everything else is good to go. So that's how we set up our random number generator. Just for a quick review, because I did kind of skip through it so I could set that up. Our value limit, too, is going to be our max number of voting options. Winning value is going to be on zero. Your roll time is going to be instant. Your pick each number once is going to be reset on round start or game start. I'm doing round start. Um, zone direction is going to be forward because we want to go the direction of where we're placing our stuff. And the length is going to be whatever you want. You can have it. doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to, we want the audio to be off. Okay? Awesome. Okay, so now we've got our pulse trigger here. So what we're going to do here is we want to make sure that it loops indefinitely. Um... We can just head, leave the tempo the way it is. The length, we're actually going to make it small here. <laughs> All right. We can just, we can make everything small here, honestly, just to make it look neater. Zone direction is going to be forward. For this one, we want to make sure that it's sitting right on top of this random number generator. So loop indefinitely on. Length however, um, is going to just make sure the length is just partially on here. It's not going through this part, okay? So that's our length. This is personal, whatever you want it to be. Um, activating time is going to send a pulse. Um, everything else here is pretty good to go. Just double checking everything. Yep, we are good to go. So we have now set up the settings for all of our devices. Now it's time to connect it through direct event binding to make sure everything works. Okay, so I'm going to start this out by putting my trigger inside this square. This little line is going to indicate which place this thing, if I step on it, you'll see, is picking, okay? So we're gonna make sure that that is doing that. What are you doing over here? No, don't be messing with me right now, okay? I'm, I'm not in the mood for it. Anyway, that is gonna that is gonna show its indication. So we're gonna have that right there, our first trigger. Why are you, your, your name not saved? I already got yelled at by my twin once, don't let me get yelled at twice. Okay, make sure everything's saved. All right, so I'm gonna set that there. All right, so, so Pretty much this whole back wall here is basically going to be our mechanics area just for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to put my HUD thing lined up with this. Alright, I'm going to line this up. Okay, and this back one is also going to be in your mechanics area. Okay? Alright, so basically this is all that's going to be where the players can see. So this will be lined up here in your mechanics and this is what the player sees. Let's go ahead and start setting this up. I'm going to actually move you a little bit. There we go. All right, so for our button, the event we're going to give it to is we're going to send it to our our switch. And we want it to check the state of the switch, okay? That's all we need it to do. In our switch, on check result off, we're going to add... Well, if I type in vote, we could move a lot faster here, couldn't we? <laughs> we're going to add our switch to make sure it turns itself on. We are going to add our two score managers to activate. So the tally one that's tallying back in the mechanics area is going to activate. And the one here that the players get to see is going to activate. Okay. And that's all we're going to do for now until I set up the next one. All right. For this one, we're not going to do any events on this visible one that the players see. It's just there for looks, okay? We're going to come back here to our mechanics one. And we are going to, on score output, that is what we put down here. The send, score, send event on scoring. On score output, we're going to have it send to our HUD message device. And we're going to have it show. We're going to send it to our um, item grantor vote and make sure that it grants the items. We're going to have it send to our timer device, which is going to be the blank one because there is a bug with this. There it is. See this blank guy? There's a little bug with this device where it doesn't show its name in there. The blank one is your timer device, okay? So don't worry about that. Trust me, it's your timer. And we're going to actually have it disable okay and we are also going to send this to the pulse trigger and we're going to have it stop its sequence okay so that's all we're going to do with this for now we are going to re-look at this again in a second okay that's all we're doing with it for now so that pretty much set this up and this up and now for this guy 
we're going to come over here on triggered add and we're going to send that to that score manager that's tallying votes and we're going to have it activate okay just the one that's tallying the votes not the visible one okay so basically what's going to happen here guys is that when a player presses this button it's going to add a score to this one and it's going to add a score to this one um if if they end up uh tying our multiple ones what's going to happen is this is going to start sending a pulse to the rng and the rng is going to start tallying off um all of them and the one that has the most is going to stop it i'll show you trust me it's going to be okay all right so let's go ahead and copy all of these devices so i can show you the finishing direct event binding settings that you need for the multiple voting options so we're going to make sure we select everything so we keep our connections okay so select everything we're going to copy it and i'm paying attention to the one in the back to make sure it goes inside those two white lines now i'm going to stop and then i'm going to go over here and i'm going to stop all right so if we look back here we should see because this one has the most devices so i'm going to look in this one that is now sending to everything that is vote two plus the two other devices that we needed to send to okay Hope y'all are still with me. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to look at our switch here because we also need something else to happen when it's checking on result off. What we need to do is for this system to work is we are going to send it to the other switches. So we're going to type in vote and we're going to type in S underscore vote. So we just get our vote ones. And we're going to send it to all of, of the other ones. Um, I didn't name that one. That's going to be vote three. Let's take care of that actually. Okay, sorry, I fixed my name in my devices. If you guys want to save you trouble of doing that, just leave this one without a number at the end of it, and then these two will get the one and the two or whatever. Okay, anyway, so what we're going to do here now, guys, is we're going to set up our switches. Remember I said earlier we're going to come back and do some more events? Well, that's that's now. So we're going to go over here to our events, and we're going to do on check result off, and we're now going to, in order to make this system work, we are going to add our other switches. So vote one is all vote one's already in here. So we're gonna add vote two and we're gonna turn it on. And we are gonna add vote three and we are gonna turn this on. And this will prevent players from being able to vote on all three of the things. Now, if this is something you don't want, then just don't do this step basically. And they can vote on all three. Okay. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna set this up on the other ones. So for this one, on check result off, we're gonna add. vote number one to turn on and vote number three to turn on and the same thing with this one except we're going to leave three out we're going to put one and two in here one turn on two turn on all right guys so i now have everything all set up so now when players vote on something they won't be able to vote on more than one they can click the button all they want but because we have it set through all these switches it won't actually send the signal it needs to do now i also said we were going to come back to these devices here okay because now we need to make it so when it does the rng it doesn't accidentally add more votes after it's done doing the max votes on one of these so all we need to do here is on score output we're now going to add all the triggers except for the trigger that triggers this one a lot of trigger words <laughs> so we're gonna add t vote am i doing all caps i don't know <laughs> i'm weird guys t vote one disable t vote two disable won't matter about three because it's already finished doing its job we're gonna do the same thing here but we're gonna leave out vote um trigger number two so we're gonna add and like i said this is just like a safety net right now so it doesn't accident that RNG, even though the pulse got disabled, doesn't accidentally select another one. We're messing up what we grant the players. Okay, and for the last one, we'll do two and three. All right, so let's review, guys. Um, let's go through the review what we connected and, and everything with these devices, all right? So our button is going to on actor, uh, interact. Wow, I'm getting tongue-tied, guys. So our button 
is going to send to its corresponding switch to check the state. Our switch, when its checked result is off, it's going to turn on the switch. It's going to activate the two um, score managers, our visible one and our tally one. It's going to turn on the other two switches. And like I said, that prevents people from voting on more than one. If you don't care about that, you can just you can just leave those two out. Okay, that's that has that's that one. This one's going to have no events on it. This just should be empty with nothing on the events. Okay, and just double check the only thing at, that's in functions is the score sending to it. For our one that's in our mechanic theory that's making everything work, we want to make sure that it is granting the item from the item grantor that corresponds with it. It's showing the HUD for the one that corresponds with it. It is disabling our timer, and like I said, it's a current bug with a timer. It's going to say unknown device. Don't worry. Don't mess with it. Leave it alone. It's fine. It's going to send to our pulse trigger to stop the sequence that's going to happen. It is going to send a signal to the other two triggers inside the RNG device to disable them so they can't be picked after the sequencer stops if the RNG is still rolling. Okay? Awesome. Nothing for our um, item grantor. Nothing to do with it. And for our HUD message, no setting to display. And for our trigger, it's going to just send a signal to our tally vote score manager, the one that's inside our mechanics area, to activate. It's going to add that score every time the RNG device hits it. Okay? So we are all set up here. All right. And we have no events to send, so this should be completely empty. And same for this. There's no events to send, so that should be completely empty. And our timer, the only thing it's going to send is on success. I did not add it. That's my, I'm so sorry, guys. We're going to add this on here. I thought I did. I'm a bot, guys. When it's done, the one success, we want it to um, start the sequence of the sequencer. Okay? So make sure you add that. So for our timer, we're going to add on success, send event to pulse trigger, start sequence. <sighs> Lots to have covered. And I hope I did not lose you guys during any of this. The last thing we got to do here before we test is put some items inside our item granters. So I'm going to quickly do that and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I went ahead and put in a, just like a quick loadout here for each one of these. And just so we can see that everything's working correctly, I went ahead and put a billboard over top of each of these buttons, which one is the voting for. Um, so like I said, everything pretty much behind where I'm standing, everything back here is going to be in a mechanics area where the player isn't going to see. This is the only thing optional that you should have out here for the, in the selection area for them to see is the timer. That's the only thing that should be optional, but for this sake, I will be in my mechanics area. So let's go ahead and start it and make sure everything's working. All right, so what should happen here now if I want to vote for the Havoc? These two switches are going to turn off, or on, I mean. Haha, <laughs> that's what I meant. And it's going to vote for the Havoc. And we're going to wait for the last second. And you're going to see back there what's going to happen, that if another player had chose this one, it'd have a one, and we're going to see what happens if it would, what it happens to make it do its job, basically. And just got to wait for the countdown. I should have made it smaller. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, the single server is, is just making that thing do its job. And it actually did grant me the one that had the most votes, which was the Havoc loadout. So it works out great. What I'm going to do for the sake of this tutorial, guys, is I'm going to bring in um, Rubble Demon real quick, and I'm going to have her vote on one so it shows in a tie, and you can see how it does the tiebreaker. So I will see you what you feel like in a second. It's going to be a bit for me. <laughs> All right, guys, so I have Rubble Demon here, and we are going to go ahead and show you guys what happens when there is a tie in the score manager devices. All right, I'm going to have Rubble Demon here vote for the MK... Um, Alpha Sharp Fuse Pump, I think that's what it's called. Please don't hate me if I'm wrong. And I'm going to go ahead and vote for the Havoc. And as you see, guys, I cannot vote on anything else again. And neither can Rebel Demon here. She cannot add to any of these votes because she's already voted. Okay? So what's going to happen now is because we are in a tie, um, the, the RNG is going to help break the tiebreaker between these two. So it should choose only one of these two. What well, wins? It looks like the Havoc won. So you can see it that it counts it for those two. So that's how we break a tie in the voting system. Okay, guys. Well, that is it. That is a voting system for loadouts. You can also use this voting system for other things like map selection. Um, the thing you'll change onto it is my other tutorial where you teleport 
um, all the players after game start. You basically use that system, but you're going to have it tied to the score manager like you would the item grinder. You're going to have the activate the player reference devices. And you're going to have one set per um, score manager that you put down. So if you have six players, you're going to have six player references and six teleporters for this one, and so for six and six for this one, and six and six for this one. Um, if that confused you, don't worry. Reach out to my Discord. I'll help you out, guys. So I hope this hope this voting system was helpful for you guys. I know there was quite a few people that wanted me to do this. Um, it's a long one, and then it can be confusing. So if I confused you, I apologize. Please, if you need some help with this or any questions or want to help figure out a different type of voting for something other than loadout, reach out to my Discord. Link is in the description below. Um, I do appreciate everyone that's been watching these tutorials. Make sure you leave a comment to maybe another tutorial or let me know in my discord of something else you'd like me to do other than that guys thanks for being awesome i will see you in the next one bye